The government claims the health service is fully funded, but in reality, it faces £26 billion of health and social care cuts due to political decisions. Political decisions that this and previous governments have made. The government claims to have a plan, 44 of them to be precise, 44 bleak assessments of a health service in crisis, which for all their management jargon and talk of tough choices offer little more than cuts and closures. They call them sustainability and transformation plans. But what is sustainable about debts that can only be paid with our patients' health and yet still won't be settled? Where is the transformation when the money to build new hospitals and health centres is being siphoned off to pay debts? Where indeed is the plan? We've seen the glossy documents, one STP in London spending more than two million getting Deloitte, McKinsey and others to draw up theirs. But really, where is the plan? A plan that actually works? This government's designs are just fantasy and yet time and again it is us, the people who work in the National Health Service and social care, who are called unrealistic when we speak up for patients and their families. Dreamers when we expect when we insist on better, I make no apology for dreaming of a better future. But the difference between us and those in governments is that we live in the day-to-day -day present of this health service. Politicians talk about a health service where care moves into the community and yet run a health service where the money moves the other way. They talk about blocking beds, but it's not the patients, it's the politicians their policies, their choices, their neglect that means that there are simply not enough beds in the first place. In the health service where I work, I think of the first patient who died under my care. I'll call him, for the purposes of this, George. He came to us with a simple infection, a lovely man in his 90s who had no family left to care for him. We treated him, he went to the discharge ward and in the shiny health service that lives only in politicians' minds, he should have been home within a day. But George never went home. He was on that ward for a month and a half. It was where he developed a further infection and it was there that he died. A place he would never have chosen to be. A place he would not have needed to be had the right support been there. I filled in his death certificate and biologically, whilst his disease was the cause of death. I knew that in reality, what had happened to him had been influenced by political choices. We have to reject these choices. That's not the health service that we've been promised. It's not the health service that we voted for. It's not the health service that patients deserve. What we are seeing now is an NHS at breaking point. We need a service that's honest and dignified and fair, and we should be standing together to achieve it.